boys and girls, for our book today, we are going to read I'd Like to Be an Astronaut. So we're going to learn about gravity, space travel, and famous astronauts, okay? So there's going to be some songs in here, I think, too. So when I grow up, I want to be something very interesting. The job I, I'll do will help a lot of people, and I'll like the work I do. Each day will be adventurous and I'll strive to learn a lot. Then I'll share what I know and my knowledge will grow. It's the perfect, perfect job. Space travel has always been fascinating to me. So when I grow up, I want to be an astronaut. I know I need to study hard in school, be in good health and work well with others. I either want to be a pilot astronaut or a mission specialist. If I'm a pilot astronaut, I will first have to become a jet pilot. If I choose to become a mission specialist, I will learn to do spacewalks, satellite launches and repairs, and experiments in space. Now science is important, so I'll study hard when learning about biology. Experiments in chemistry will help me learn to develop good hypotheses. Then I'll read, and I'll read, and I'll read some more, and I'll share just what I learn. Because when I grow up, I want to be something very interesting. Yes, I'll share what I know, and my knowledge will grow. It's the perfect, perfect job. It's the perfect, perfect job. All right, special seats for everyone. Where would you like to sit? Depending on the job that you would do, there is a special seat for you. Below is an illustration that shows where astronauts sit during takeoff and landing. Here's the, the rocket ship. So here is the commander, the pilot, and the mission specialist. I'm feeling light as a feather. My friends and I are having so much fun Away up high, we float around the space deck turning somersaults, oh my. For weightless we have become as the earth is far behind. The feeling is so funny that it's quite hard to describe. I'm feeling light as a feather, bouncy as a ball, real topsy-turvy and really, really tall. For now my face is puffy and my voice a little stuffy, but I like what I am feeling, it's weightlessness. Now eating is a challenge as the food will float away so every item is secured to the tray. And going to the bathroom, well, let me just say this, a seatbelt helps you stay in place for you don't want to miss. It's really quite important every day to exercise, but doing lots of push-ups, I would really not advise. For running on a treadmill that's attached to the floor will help you stay in better shape than push-ups galore. I'm feeling light as a feather, bouncy as a ball, real topsy-turvy and really, really tall. For now my face is puffy and my voice a little stuffy, but I like what I am feeling, it's weightlessness. So weightlessness in space. So gravity is the force on Earth that keeps us from floating into space. If we drop a dish, it will fall to the ground and break. If we jump into the air, we will come back to the ground. In space, however, astronauts experience weightlessness. They can turn somersaults in the air and float around the space deck. They feel puffy in the face and actually grow one or two inches taller. They may even experience space sickness. The following tools help astronauts adapt to living in a weightless environment. So here's a special food tray. Here's the bathroom facilities. Here's the sleeping facilities. Look, they have to strap them down. And here is some exercise equipment. So this one's next. Can we live in space? The US launched a lab up in the sky. They named it Skylab. I'm sure you've guessed why. For it was a space station that would let us know if we could live in space for very long. And yes, they all agreed. The astronauts wanted to learn more about the sun, the source of heat and light it provided for everyone. So with special telescopes, they were able to explore and learn new facts about the sun and a whole lot more. It's called Skylab, a lab up in the sky, a place to learn the answers, a place to verify that we can live in space. It was evident, for Skylab was a successful experiment. Yes, Skylab did let us know that it is possible to live in space for long periods of time. Skylab was launched on May 14, 1973, without any astronauts aboard. The crew was scheduled to blast off and board the Skylab the next day. But because the shield that protects Skylab from the heat of the sun ripped away, another plan was needed. Eleven days later, the Fix-It crew went up and repaired Skylab. It was then used over the next nine months by three separate crews. We learned a lot about the Earth, the sun, and that it is possible for us to live in space. Then on February 8th of 74, the last Skylab grew Crew quickly climbed aboard and returned to Earth for their job was done. A tiresome trip, but the crew said still had fun. The United States kept Skylab in the sky, and more than five years it fell from way up high. 
parts landed in Australia and in the ocean blue, but most would say that Skylab was successful too. It's called Skylab, a, sky, a lab up in the sky, a place to learn the answers, a place to verify that we can live in space, and it was evident, for Skylab was a successful experiment. So Skylab is a 118-foot long laboratory that was launched into the sky on May 14, 1973. Before this time, astronauts from the United States had made six trips to the moon. Although the trips to the moon were successful, they only lasted a few days. Skylab was designed to see if we could live in space for longer periods of time. It was also a way for us to learn more about the Earth and the sun. All right, so here, how does the shuttle work? When the fuel tank is empty, it will burn away as it falls to Earth. The fuel tank will not be used again. The solid rocket boosters fall away after the fuel has been used up. They will fall into the sea and be towed to a ship to be reused again. There are five main engines that help the space shuttle lift off. Once the, space, once the shuttle is in orbit, the cargo bay doors are opened. They, will, they can release a satellite or laboratory or whatever the mission of the shuttle. Because the shuttle is moving at speeds over 17 miles per hour, 17,000 miles per hour when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, the shuttle's surface temperature can be over 2,370 degrees Fahrenheit. There are special tiles which help protect the orbiter. The shuttle glides toward Earth. The wheels are lo lowered as it approaches the runway. All right, stepping out in space with the MMU. Stepping out in space with the MMU, the man maneuvering unit. Stepping out in space to enjoy the view, that's what the MMU can do. The life support system it snaps onto, onto the astronaut's back. So the astronaut can move about, it's like a very large backpack. Some say it looks like a comfy chair that the astronaut sits into. The hand grips help to operate and move the MMU. The astronaut wears a special suit to supply the oxygen to keep the temperatures just right, the, astronaut, the astronaut's true friend. Powered by jet thrusters that release nitrogen gas, the astronaut moves all around. I'm sure she had a blast. The MMU was first tested aboard Skylab and used during shuttle missions, but currently is no longer in use today. The man maneuvering unit. When an astronaut needs to leave the spacecraft, the man maneuvering unit, or the MMU, is how they travel. It's a jet-propelled backpack with a life support system for the astronaut. The astronaut controls the MMU with hand grips on the armrests. They go up, down, or sideways. The astronaut uses the left hand control. The right hand control helps the astronauts move in different directions. All right, space colonies. Will the Earth get too crowded? Will we need another plan? Is pollution a problem on our precious land? Is outer space the answer? Can we live in colonies? and build a home for everyone to live in harmony? Space colonies, a home up in the sky. Space colonies, a home that would supply. All the needed services and all the needed goods. The future, this future home is possible, a potential likelihood. Now, will we live somewhere in space or live right on the moon? Is gravity a problem if new homes we pursue? Though scientists would need to know just how this would be done, to live in space colonies, I think it would be great fun. Uh, space colonies, a home up in the sky. Space colonies, a home that would supply. All the needed services and all the needed goods, this future home is possible, a potential likelihood. I'll be an astronaut. It's called cooperation. Working well with others, solving problems you will see are things that NASA looks for in a person who will be. An astronaut who will learn and show knowledge in a way that will help our country learn new things each and every day. It's called cooperation. I think you will agree that if we work together, it will just become routine to talk about the problems working as a solid team for finding new solutions will make everyone succeed. Many jobs to choose from. There are many jobs to choose from. There are many things to do. If you think you'd like to fly, these jobs are right for you. So learn about space travel and give it a lot of thought and one day you'll become a fam famous astronaut. Famous astronauts, they're famous astronauts with the courage to explore the unknown mysteries of outer space and more. With knowledge and determination, they all climbed aboard to learn about a place mankind has never gone before. Heroes of our time, they are heroes, heroes of our time, the ones who make a difference, the ones who changed our lives, they are heroes that we won't forget. 
Their thirst for knowledge will live on forever in our minds. I'm feeling light as a feather. I'm feeling light as a feather, bouncy as a ball, really topsy-turvy and really, really tall. For now my face is puffy and my voice a little stuffy, but I like what I'm feeling. It's weightlessness. When I grow up, I want to be something very interesting. The job I will do will help a lot of people and I'll like the work I do. Each day will be adventurous and I'll strive to learn a lot. Then I'll share what I know and my knowledge will grow. It's the perfect, perfect job. Great job listening to the book, boys and girls. We're gonna do a reading activity next. I'll see you then, bye.